Hey there, Spike fans. Welcome to the Season 2 Map and Balance Preview. My name is hi -Rez Bart. Being joined today by the one and only Hi-Rez Scott and Hi-Rez Drybear, both from our design team. And we're going to be taking you through uh, a lot of the changes here in Season 2, but first and foremost are the visual changes to the map. Uh, as this map has been rolled out, we saw a preview of it at the World Championship. It's been available on the public test server for a couple weeks. Overall, people seem to be pretty excited about it. But why don't you give us uh, some indication about exactly what the goals were for the visual changes to the map here in Season 2. Yeah, I think there was two goals really with the visual changes. One was, you know, we wanted just to increase the art quality throughout the map for and the visual fidelity. Um, and the second goal was we wanted to improve player navigation. Um, so now when you look at the map, the different regions you're in, if you're on the Gold Fury side or the Fire Giant side, there's a, a big visual difference to help players kind of know where they are at all times. Well, part of season two, uh, the big the big thematic changes for the season are increasing variation amongst gods, play styles, builds, and what you can really do with the map and how the map allows you to kind of make these changes and build these compositions. So when, when we look at the map, one of the first things that catches my eye is the duo side of the map, the Gold Fury engagement a little bit different, as well as the buffs that you have available to you. Can you guys walk me through uh, why these buffs change, what they change to and from, and how you think it's going to impact kind of the ability to, to itemize and to select different gods on that side of the map? Yeah, you know, I think one of the things we can start with is talking about the mana buff. Um, because when we look through really season one, one of the themes we saw is that there was just too much available mana in the map. And that created issues with us with itemization and how we wanted to take itemization. And certainly issues with the clear on some gods because they were able to just use their abilities so frequently in the early part of the game. So we kind of flagged early on as removing the mana buff on the, uh, the Gold Fury side um, is something we wanted to do. And that was sort of the, the starting point for kind of the buff camp changes as we went through with the new Conquest map. Yeah, of course. And after that, obviously, we decided that maybe some of the buffs should have changed. So we moved the movement speed buff over to the other side to align with the other one, the damage buff kind of align with the other one as well. But we decided that it felt weird as a hunter and an assassin really fighting over that orange buff. I mean, obviously, the assassin would want the movement speed. The hunter would want that attack speed. And separating that made a lot of sense. And so what we did is we kept that movement speed as a movement speed buff, but then took that attack speed off and created a brand new buff, the purple buff, that allows you to increase your attack speed, but also gives you a little bit of in-hand power so only affecting your direct basic attacks. Right, so you needed something to replace that blue buff with, and uh, moving the orange buff to always be on the right side of the map, I'm sorry, the fire giant side of the map for both teams kind of allows you to have this extra spot and split that up into a movement speed and attack speed buff, which makes a lot of sense, right? And, and because of the removal of mana from the system on, on that duo side of the map, it seems like kind of the lane dynamics are gonna be emphasized a little bit more. And we see that echoed through some of the new rules around leashing. Um, now, what I want to talk about uh, in a little bit more detail is the Gold Fury, the Gold Fury encounter, and kind of the changes that we see there. Yeah, I think, you know, when we looked at kind of shifting uh, the layout of the map around, one of the things that we really looked at was the time it took to reach objectives, mm. um, both from your safe zones, your towers, and also the time it takes to reach objectives just from any other objective in the map you might be at. Um, and so really those changes are around just kind of optimizing those routes and the timing, and also creating a more natural flow where you know the direction you're going is the right one. Because um, right, there right. were places in our current jungle that you reached that it was very easy for players to take kind of the wrong direction, like the not the shorter direction or the more dangerous one. So we wanted to improve that. Sure, yeah. I mean, just thinking back to kind of uh, the, the original map uh, that we've been playing on for the last couple of years is, you know, when you're, when you're approaching, especially like the, the left lane from mid on the order side, the duo lane, kind of do you go behind the tier one or in front of it is, a, is a, not a very easy decision to make navigation-wise uh, from the elements in the map. With the changes that were made, um, the line of sight and kind of navigational elements to the Gold Fury have changed up some. Uh, can you talk through kind of what those changes are and, and why they're significant, especially in high level play? There's a good list of significant changes and some minor tweaks as well to the area. You're going to get a little bit of a smoother curve from the order side coming into the Gold Fury and a little bit of a harsher one on the Chaos. So the distance from the Gold Fury to the Order Tier 1 and the uh, Chaos Tier 1 tower in mid lane is a little bit more even now. And there's also more opportunities to jump in and initiate. Uh, you have a little uh, less space on the Order side towards that attack speed purple buff mm -hmm. now. So there's less pocket space for them to sit in. Overall, the Gold Fury just expanded a little bit on either side. So there's just more space to initiate and also counter initiate on. Yeah, that's actually true for, for both objectives. Also, the Fire Giant also uh, got more space for the encounter. Because um, one of the things we looked at as well was that when you had these big team fights, we wanted to allow more space uh, to maneuver so that some of uh, the AOE attacks and the AOE focused gods weren't quite as strong in those fights. Sure, it helps your single target damage dealers. Uh, assassins right, right. get in and out of the fights, guardians make space to clear out. Um, on the subject of the fire giant, he's got a little bit of a, an upgrade in and of himself. Um, there's a couple of, of mechanic changes uh, kind of across the board for all neutrals that are coming into the map before we get into the fire giant specifically is leashing. 
Uh, and so leashing refers to when you, you're fighting a buff camp and you leave its range that it's allowed to be in, um, how it resets and what happens. So in the current live version of the game, uh, the camp will reset and immediately go invulnerable to damage and have 100% HP. That has been changed in this new version of the map. Um, what happens now is a little bit different. The, the camp doesn't immediately reset to full HP. Um, can you talk about kind of the strategic implications that that has, as well as kind of maybe the more casual implications uh, of readability of when you can and can hit the camp? Yeah, it was difficult in the beginning, I think, because some players would want to aggress on the goal through the fire, especially the situation would happen a lot where there was a late game team fight between two teams. The winning team was fighting it, and you would see the, the counter initiation come, and you'd just leash it away, and it'd be done. Uh, there wasn't much downside there, so we wanted to have more opportunity, along with a space creator for the fire giant area, for different team comps to get in there. If your team comp is not 100% objective focused, you'd have an opportunity to really leverage your team fight space to take over that fire giant. If you're really starting a fire giant or a gold fury, that's a more permanent decision now. We talked a bit about how the geometry around the fire giant is different in the world, um, but the way that that engagement works now is, is quite a bit different. Uh, as before, he kind of raised the lava pit and would throw lava balls at you, occasionally knocking you up. Um, that has been changed significantly now to a much different engagement. Can you walk through some of the, like, kind of the big aspects of how that's working now and, and maybe try to give us an indication of what kind of gameplay would be required to fight him? As before, it would kind of stand and tank it and then kill it with the hand of the gods. Now it seems to be a little bit different. There's a lot more mobility required to fight the fire giant. I mean, instead of creating the, an entire pool of lava in that area, now he creates little pits that appear around everyone in the area, regardless of teams. So I got killed by this. Just Aggressing <laughs> team, defensive team, whoever's attacking the fire giant, if you're in that area, he creates a pit at your feet that does a large amount of damage very, very quickly. And so you have to step outside of it. And you can actually control this a bit. Obviously, you can sit around the outside and create pools and walls that prevent people from going in. Not only that, but he also has this ground targeted line scale that'll throw on the ground and after a brief second, it'll pop you up into the air as it used to before. And he also has a range and melee attack. So it's much more engaging to play him and it's also something you have to be very careful to move while you're going around. You can't just sit and fight him and try and life steal through. In terms of uh, kind of going back to that theme of, of immersion, you know, as, as the new player experience continues to be a more and more important part of the game in season two, um, how do these kind of more varied engagements yield to that? I mean, we see it echoed even through the normal buff camps. I think a lot of it was just around increasing the immersion. Uh, you know, when we had the mana camp and the guys that looked like mages, um, you know, shifting it up so the battle's a little bit different so that they're using range attacks was just something that seemed to be enjoyable. Um, it changes up a little bit also your strategies there because they don't, they don't pull as far. Right. If you're trying to pull them into the corner. And we like the way that kind of changed that fight a little bit. Um, so I, I think it was a combination of just uh, adding kind of new fun gameplay elements. Um, and just making it a little more immersive for players. Um, and you kind of see that too when we've added these introduction animations um, that we've gone right. through several rounds of improving, um, where uh, you know, now instead of just appearing, there's a little introduction animation where everyone kind of comes in. Um, and for the boss objectives, there's actually a really big introduction animation, um, which is all around really just increasing uh, kind of the, the, you know, the excitement players have you know, when they're there. You know, when you see the gold fury flying through the map for the first time, it, yeah. it reinforces also you know, what side of the map you're on. Uh, it reinforces that objective is there, and it's, it's just really fun to look at. Yeah, notably when you're starting at the, the red buff on the right side from the order team, the Gold Fury is walking around on top of that camp before yep. they spawn in. So, I mean, you really, really see these things uh, kind of ambulating throughout the, their domain. Oh, yeah. Um, kind of finally, uh, the final piece here is, is buffs and buff belts. So, um, maybe, I, who knows what the community calls them. We call them buff belts here yes. internally, which are the, <laughs> the swirling icons that go around your gut, uh, depending on what player you're playing. Um, those have had a pretty significant visual upgrade, as well as the, the kind of indication that the buff is, has dropped, uh, what that actual artwork looks like has changed. So, you know, the overall visuals changed. I think the goal was to make it feel less like it was an icon floating around you, and more like... A little like less gamey. Yeah, a little less gamey, a little more like it was a natural part of the world floating around you. And same thing with, uh, you know, when it drops, instead of being sort of this icon model, um, it's now rune. Um, so it's just designed to sort of, uh, you know, increase the, uh, I'll use the word immersion again, <laughs> increase the immersion, but make the world feel more alive and like it's, it's a living, breathing place that you're in versus uh, a little bit more of a gamey icon. Well, guys, that cuts it up for the map for us. Uh, be sure to enjoy the map yourself and let us know how you feel. If you want to see more about what's coming up in this patch and see our, uh, our lovely panel break that down for you, you can click on any of the annotations right here. <laughs>